Hello, everyone. Um, huge crowd today. Thank you all for coming. Um, as she said, my name is Alexander Frejanic. I am a junior studying management in the Rinker School of Business. And today I'm presenting on AI and product design. Um, so let's begin with a little bit of a story I'm sure many of you have heard or seen of Star Trek. Um, there's this, an episode in the Next Generation series called Booby Trap where the chief engineer of the ship um, runs into a problem with the, with the ship that could be detrimental for everyone on board. Um, and his idea is to recreate an artificial image of the ship's original designer and engineer. Um, and in true Star Trek fashion, he does this. And together, they work out a solution that helps save the ship from uh, catastrophe, if you will. Um, and so that is going to be an example of what we'll later reference as case-based reasoning. Um, but even after 30 years, um, artificial intelligence is a hot topic and being used to create designs and new ideas within the industry. Um, so as many of you probably already know by the title of my uh, presentation, the purpose of the study is to analyze um, and review literature um, that deals with artificial intelligence and how it impacts directly to product design and creates a competitive advantage for a firm by doing so. Um, and in doing so, I looked at three specific uh, research questions. The first were, what were the key techniques that companies and organizations are using um, to create this artificial intelligence um, product? Um, secondly, what competitive advantage, if any, does it create? And thirdly, what is um, the current state of AI and what is the future of AI with regards to the product design industry? Um, and to begin, as anyone would do, we have to define some terms and come to a mutual understanding on what we mean by product design. Um, I think many of you have cell phones, iPhones um, in the room, and when you think of that product, a lot of you think of it as you getting it from the store, from your service provider, but a lot of the times the design process, the entire manufacturing system, all of that um, is forgotten about. Um, so when we're talking about product design, it is that the creative and knowledge intrinsic work that happens behind the scenes to create such a product. Um, and in doing so, you want the highest quality product for the lowest material cost. Um, and so try to really wrap your head about around what it means to have a product and design that product. And we're discussing that whole process rather than you just getting it from the store. Um, artificial intelligence is also a very broadly defined term. Um, it was first coined in 1956 by John McCarthy. Um, little did he know that it would be a hot topic today um, and even a fear for some. Um, and so in studying artificial intelligence, there are three objectives that the study usually falls under. Uh, the first would be strong AI, and that's what many view um, as the fear, and that's like robots ruling the world, um, actually acting in the place of human. Um, the weak version of AI is the use of AI to just kind of understand human reasoning and kind of what we do and who we are. And then the third, uh, the third objective is using human reasoning as a model, but not the end goal. Um, that's what um, many businesses are implementing, um, using human knowledge and resources and um, things that are available to us to create a better system and better product and a better um, innovation system. Um, but for the purpose of the study, we defined artificial intelligence as the ability of a digital computer to perform tasks commonly associated with intelligent beings. Um, and as I said before, in question one, we looked at the key techniques. Um, the first technique is expert systems. The second is case-based reasoning. And the third is formal grammars. Um, when you look at expert systems, um, the easiest way to understand it is if you're, say you're working on a problem, say it's shooting a three-point shot um, for all intensive purposes. And picture the expert system is basically like having Steph Curry in the room with you, the expert, in teaching you how to do so. And it's the same when you apply it to a design process. Um, it's like having someone like Steve Jobs in the engineering room from the beginning all the time. And that's what the expert systems um, seeks to do as in part of AI. Um, in short, this technique provides quick expert understanding to generate solutions. Um, so this uh, technique saves a lot of time, saves a lot of resources, and allows there to be greater um, 
reach of ideas, if you will. Um, the second is case-based reasoning. This was what I referenced in the Star Trek example. Um, it has to do with recall and having um, all of the knowledge previously stored in a system that allows the program to look back and use past experiences or the history of the design of the product to realize what's the best solution for today. Um, and that's kind of what the chief engineer did in Star Trek is he went back to the original engineer of the ship to ask who, ask them, you know, what's the problem and how can we fix it more efficiently. Um, this deals with a lot of cross-sectional research and is something that uh, is still very, out of the three, it is the most used one today. Um, and then thirdly, the third technique is formal grammars. Um, the most easiest way to understand this is through um, architecture and like design. Um, this deals with um, being able to translate different, um, whether it be shape or numeric or language, um, different codes into di other codes. So t um, for example, 2D into 3D, um, this allows it to have a print see the print and then all of a sudden you have the 3D image. Um, and those are what we call shape grammars. Um, and so formal grammars are a way of representing the precise structure of things um, within the design. Um, and then uh, we found this study, it's called the Fujitsu study, um, done in 2017. Um, it kind of wraps all three of these techniques up into a tight little bundle for us um, and kind of shows the application and implication of doing so. Um, they studied uh, printed circuit boards uh, they realized the traditional approach and the way to develop and designing them was inefficient and co not cost effective. And so they decided to implement different sources and areas of artificial intelligence. Um, the results came out increasingly positive. Um, they realized that this is a system that is uh, the future, really, and is forward thinking and it increased the effectiveness of the product, the pro product perform even better through the use of artificial intelligence and in doing so is a key study for my research. Um, so now we um, jump into the second question of my research was what competitive advantage does artificial intelligence give design the design industry? Um, and there are two key advantages that come out of implementing artificial intelligence and that those would be the decision making process and it's very cost effective in the long run. Um, the, when, we cut, when, hmm, when we discuss the decision-making advantage, um, there's a few key areas. One's prediction, minimal decision fatigue, and multitasking. When it comes to prediction, that uh, deals a lot with forecasting, kind of what to expect within the product's early life cycle, what to expect within the industry, um, and it uses a lot of different uh, model learning and machine learning techniques, um, and that's kind of the biggest um, advantage within decision making. Uh, the second is the decision fatigue. And all of you know, like as humans, we get fatigued and we can't function at 110%, 24-7. And this, the pairing of AI with designers allows designers to accomplish more in a sh shorter amount of time and in, with greater impact. And that kind of leads into the multitasking capability is one that artificial intelligence programs are usually able to do one or more things at a time, as well as right now, we are in a state where artificial intelligence is working hand in hand with designers and researchers, and so both parties are able to accomplish more towards the same goal collectively. Um, and so that's really, really nice, and the result of that is increased efficiency and effectiveness, especially within um, the area of resources. Um, secondly is the cost advantage. Um, many companies think that, or many people today think that it costs way too much to implement and re do research into AI. However, the, the benefits in the long run of implementing artificial intelligence are like none other. Um, within the research, there has been increased revenue, uh, customer satisfaction, and job satisfaction from those working within the industry. Um, but like I said before, it kind of really optimizes that product's life cycle and allows the 
those predictions to be made on the front end so the companies know and can uh, eliminate the waste and the uh, unnecessary aspects um, early in the product's life cycle. Um, and so ideally, AI helps for design for manufacturability and design for economical manufacture. Um, so that leads us to artificial intelligence today. Kind of the third uh, question we asked in our research was how is it impacting today and how is it impacting the future? Um, if you look at this chart um, to my left, um, you can see Google, Apple, Facebook, Intel, Microsoft, and Amazon as all listed as companies that are on the left column. Those are all acquisitions that have been made within the last few years of artificial intelligence companies and companies doing research into specific aspects of artificial intelligence. Um, these companies are realizing that you must uh, implement some type of AI in order to compete aggressively in the global marketplace. Um, I'm sure many of you have used apps like Uber and Lyft. Those all involve artificial intelligence and have from the, their conception in the design process. Um, also, you, your virtual assistants as Siri or uh, Alexa, uh, you got your lang language algorithms and better surveillance cameras. Those are all under the umbrella of what artificial intelligence is doing today within the design category. And then the future of artificial intelligence is very, very bright. Um, many are projecting huge numbers for the growth of this industry, especially as it relates to um, specifically technological products. Um, and first, AI will create an ease of laborious tasks. I, we previously mentioned that when we discussed the, the decision-making advantage. Um, it allows for um, a, tasks that would be mundane to us in our work to be done by um, basically virtually and through the technology. Um, AI will also be able to assist in the creation of sophisticated designs. Um, one of the most interesting research articles I've read um, dealt with the future of airplane and airplane uh, aircraft design and how using uh, artificial intelligence can help um, cater to almost like it would be the very high class uh, aspects of society, but cater to the needs and wants of what people would want on a specific airline. Um, and that was just really, really interesting to hear how they uh, envision the future um, in terms of design of big, huge spacecrafts. Um, a can also be created um, to function like human assistance. Um, this is kind of people's sphere, but in some areas, um, it could be seen as useful and a positive. Um, so that relates back to the um, strong AI that I discussed at the beginning, and there are many that project that certain aspects of that will reach our society within the next 10 to 15 years. Um, so that is definitely something that some look forward to and some are scared by. Um, and so the results of looking through those three questions and the managerial implications would be that organizations seeking future competitive advantage should definitely increasingly embrace and extend to the benefits of AI. Um, through the formal grammar's expert system and case-based reasoning, um, one can see the great advantages of using those to increase and enhance your design process. Um, as far as the competitive advantage, I only mentioned two advantages, but there are several more, and um, research is suggesting that there are more and more advantages that they find as they continue to utilize this newer technology. Um, and then, obviously, the AI will continue to grow. Um, it's on pace um, to be one of the key parts of business in the future and in the industry. Um, people are beginning to study, go to school strictly for um, basically artificial intelligence. Um, and so that's been really interesting to research and to study. Um, and part of this presentation, uh, my main focus was to allow for there to be questions um, about such things, especially how it relates to the business world. And so that's where we're at right now. Thank you. Does anyone have any? There's like a whole like eight of you out there. Well, could you address Alex? Uh, you know, much of the fear of AI is it will obsolete human labor. Yeah. Um, and that could be viewed as an advantage or disadvantage depending on where you're looking at it from a business perspective. What, what's your research indicate about how 
the, a lot of the research is indicating um, that society and pop culture has it wrong, that AI is replacing, whereas AI is being coupled with um, human, human work and human design. Um, it's in my research, it, in the early stages still um, at, of artificial intelligence, so it's creating jobs on the end of, people need to be able to start those processes and start the work of creating AI. Um, so it's been really interesting to hear in pop culture, oh, AI is gonna take my job, oh, this robot's gonna do all this stuff, I'm never gonna have to clean my house again. But it's really like the artificial intelligence design community is creating it to work with the designer, work with the researcher to not overtake their, their role, but to allow them to do their role better and quicker, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what I've studied, the most uh, impactful thing, and as many of those large companies like Google and Amazon would say, like, it is essential to have time to just be creative. And I think the use of AI allows for creativity to flow more consistently and more rapidly within your core design team if you have an AI system taking over those mundane things. And sure, it'll implement, it, it'll allow other things to be accomplished and allow other roles to take the place of what you would have been doing during that time. But I think the biggest thing, especially for these larger corporations that have these brilliant minds working, if they can limit the time that they're doing a mundane task and use that to be creative and innovative, it's doing tremendous work for the company. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, what do you think the potential downfalls are? Yeah. Um, I would say that the potential downfalls is uh, it's harder to say and wrap your mind around, but the but human beings becoming dependent on something that is created for the purpose of good, but when you become so dependent on something, especially in a workplace. If that eventually fails, like you're back to square one, and I think that's where, like, that's why a lot of people are scared of the, the aspects of strong AI because then it's not working co in in a like marriage with the designer; it's replacing them, and then there's no purpose left in the job. And I think that's why people are loving AI right now, is it is allowing for the creativity to be more and for people to really invest in their passions. And once, if those be, were to be replaced, it would be doing more harm than good. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think there are people that are pushing the boundary of it already. I mean, just stuff that, I mean, a common example is what Elon Musk is doing in Tesla with automated driving and things like that. Um, I think there will be a time and a place for it eventually um, in terms of the dramatic innovation and implementation of AI. But right now, I think the best way to look at it, and I think the way the big companies are doing it is their designers and their innovators are very uh, close gripped on their jobs, if you will. Like, they're not gonna let somebody come in and say, uh, this process is gonna be better. And they're gonna fight and argue that they can do just as good of a job, if not better. And so I think it comes down to the pride in your work and what people are comfortable and not comfortable with at this time. Um, like 15 years ago, nobody would have been comfortable um, hitting their home button and saying, Siri, remind me tomorrow to call my mom. You know, like, but now today that's something that's so common and so, so commonplace. So I think it's just realizing what the consumers need and want at that time and using that 
to grow, if that makes sense. Any last thoughts? Thank you, guys.